Hey, what's up everybody? It's Dizzy over here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a presentation on how the average Olympic national breaking teams work. Now I know this is a controversial topic in the entire global breaking community and uh, let me just say that with breaking entering into the Olympics, this, this journey is something that we've never seen before. Okay, this is a completely different world and is probably the root cause of why there is so much controversy. So with that said, let's begin. Now I know there's a lot of b-boys and b-girls out there that want to represent their country in the Olympics, but before we do that, let's first discuss how representing your country is done in the breaking culture. So in breaking culture, it's usually done like this. You enter some sort of qualifier, you know, so for example, uh, BC1 and you win, you become the winner of that qualifier, now you just you have earned the right to go on to the next stage which you know would most likely be in this case for bc1 would be the world finals right now there might be a last chance cipher you might have to enter there might be uh, a regional championships that you might have to go through before you get to the world finals but either way you win the national championships you go and represent in the world finals but this is not how it's done in the professional sports or the Olympic sports route. In that world, it's not done like that at all. And so let me go into it and explain. So this is how representing your na your national team is done in Olympic sports and actually all Olympic sports, not just breaking. And this is probably why there is so much confusion in the breaking community. Let's begin. So in Olympic sports, there is a three tier system or let's just say a three level system. And there are benefits for each one of those tiers. So the first tier is what I call the reserves or in the Philippines, they call it the national pool. It could be called something different depending on what country or if it's in the English language. But basically I would say that it's the reserves for a specific reason. Now the second tier is what I call uh, the prospects. Uh, in the Philippines, they call it already the national team. And the third and the highest tier is what I call the star athletes or the star celebrities. And in the Philippines, they call it the national elites. Now, each, like I said, each one of these tiers has their own benefits. So let me break that down. If you make it into the reserves or the national pool, then you can have these two benefits. One, you can be invited to national training camps. So for example, if your government or your national governing body decides, hey, let's invite some coaches from around the world and throw a, a training camp for our team as the reserves or national pool, you may be invited to that to train and get your level up and to a, a new standard, to a new level. Uh, the second thing that benefit that you can receive is you may or may not be nominated to represent at different games or events, sanctioned events around the world. Now, what, the reason why I say you may or may not be is because, uh, like I said, you are a reserve, right? So if there is somebody on the national team and, or a star athlete, but if there's an event that has, for example, uh, three slots, right? Then you, can, you may be the third slot that can go with them and represent. Okay. Now, breaking is a new sport, so it is possible that in your country, you may not have anybody yet in the, as a star athlete or a prospect or any prospects on the national team, and you may be the highest ranked in the reserves or the national pool, so you may be getting that, that endorsement to go and compete at different uh, WDSF Breaking for Gold events around the world. This is possible. Now, if you move up from the reserves to the prospects, aka the national team, then there are three benefits that you may be able to uh, receive. The first benefit is that you will receive a monthly allowance. Okay? Now, how much that monthly allowance is depending on your country, uh, but it start, it, it's not very big, but it's something to offshoot the cost of having to train all the time and, and not worry too much about money and, uh, and to secure your, your uh, commitment right, to the national team. Uh, the second benefit that you can receive is you may receive some financial support for an official training coach. So they may give you a coach that's gonna be coaching you and training you and uh, helping you with your career. And that will be also funded by uh, your, either your governing body or maybe the government. And the third benefit that you can receive 
is you will be sent to represent your the country at selected games now what i mean by selected games is because the way that the national team operates is similar to like the like let me say the avengers where in the avengers you have multiple different characters uh, some are the stronger ones some are uh, you know are are specialists and what would happen is if there are different fights around the world you would send different avengers to different battles around the world and this is exactly how the national team would work right you would say for example if you were young and under 18 they might send you to the youth olympic kind of games or underage games and then other players might say okay well we need to we, we we're going to send you know our top rank to this event but we want to send you to this one so you can represent at this you know regional event right so that's basically how the national teams work and that's the reason why i'm saying selected games now if you are able to move up to the star athlete or the national elites you have way more benefits and i here i'm going to list four the first one is that you will receive a monthly salary you are you are basically going to be uh expected to put everything into this and so this will be your main job so you will receive a monthly salary usually by the sports commission of your country okay you will also have a salary for your choice of training coaches so it's not going to be just you that receives the salary but you might have a specific training coach or maybe multiple coaches that are helping you and they will also receive some some type of salary or payment or allowance for in being invested into your particular uh career okay the third um benefit that you can receive as star athlete is you will be sent to re to represent the country at the most important events such as the olympics okay the most important events you are the star athlete you are the most important person because you're the highest ranked and they're going to send you to these ones you know and the last lastly uh as a star athlete you are going to be promoted and introduced to the media and sponsors so you'll be gaining a lot more support not just from the government sector but the whole point of you being in a national as a national elite or a star athlete is that you're there you're going to be uh promoted in order to rally the whole country behind you okay so now the question is how do you make your way through this three levels these three tiers i think a lot of people would want to know this so let's get into it so this is the three tier format once again uh let's start from the very bottom if you are the breaking community okay you're the breaking community the raw breaking styles no matter what you've entered no matter what you've done in the breaking community even if you won bc1 or all of those you still are starting at the bottom at the breaking community okay and then like i said the next level is the reserves which is you know higher which everyone from the breaking community wants to get into and then above that we have the prospects and lastly we have the star athletes at the very top okay and this is how the format works so from the breaking community uh your your goal will be to get into the reserves into the national pool but how do you do that okay well there should be some open qualification okay some qualifiers or open competition that's held for just anybody to get into the reserves this is actually mandated by by uh the olympics that it should be open for anybody to want to join this this qualifier okay so most people in the breaking community may think that this is the final qualifier and that's it if i win this one open competition or qualifier then boom i am the the representative and i should get everything the government should fund me and everything like that but that's not how it works okay this is just the beginning okay so you get into the open competition and you you win it or you come second you come third and the you know they decide to take you into the national pool because you won first second or maybe even third or maybe they might only choose one but you get into the reserves now the national pool but once you get into national pool there are some expectations that are for you okay the first expectation uh is simply this that you have to be able to show passion and determination without being paid for it you need to demonstrate passion and your determination by these things by one to keep entering these sanctioned events okay you keep joining them you keep going in not just one event but you have to keep doing it you have to keep competing and showing that you're your your passion you have passion to do that and you're determined to keep going okay not just entering one but you keep going 
The second part is that you have to show respect for the governing bodies because it is the governing body, which is uh, your national dance sport federation, is going to be endorsing you. So you have to show respect to them. You can't be like, okay, I'm in, I'm in this, but F these people, they didn't uh, give me water and whatnot. Like, you know, you need to show respect for them, okay? Because you are going to be representing them, right? And, uh, and who decision is this, right? This is decided by the national governing body, which in this case is dance sport, okay? Now, once you get it to the reserves and you are there, there will be a ranking in there, but the next level is to move up into what I call the prospects or the national team, okay? So the question is, how does one make it from the reserves, the national pool, into the national team, the prospects? How do you, how do you get there? And this is simple. You have to consistently rank first, second, or third place. And when I say consistently, I mean because you are continually competing and entering uh, all the national games and stuff, you keep going to all of them, you are now showing uh, you know, the t your determination passion, but you're, you're also consistently ranking first place or second place or in the top three. Now they're, now they're, they're going to see you and say, hey, we want to bring you or invite you into the national team. Okay, so these are the expectations once you get into the national team, okay? The expectation is that you show that you are professional, that you can be professional, okay? And how that's done is by one, you have to prioritize your sports career. What that means is that because you're gonna be getting, these birds are killing me, because you're gonna be getting a, an allowance to compete, now, if there is some other event that you, you're going to be booked for, but the national team says, hey, uh, we want you to go to this event, they're going to expect you to be going to these events, right? Not saying, oh, I got another gig going on or whatever, right? You have to pri prioritize this pathway to the Olympics because that's the reason why you're getting an allowance, okay? Now, a lot of people may not like that. They might say, but this other gig is paying me so much more. If that's the case, they're going to say, well, you have other things that you want to you want to worry about. So go ahead and do that and you might be off the national team, okay? Now, the second thing is that you have to keep a professional and positive image, okay? So once again, you cannot be at that point typing on the internet saying, I think I hate this and that and what's wrong with blah, blah, blah. You can't be doing that, okay? You have to be, you have to look, because you, you're now representing the country, right? And so the country wants people who can rally who people will rally behind and be and give a positive image to the country, right? And then, lastly, another expectation is that because you're getting this monthly allowance, they're going to expect that you have a continuous and gradual improvement in the rankings. So, if the country is giving you this funding, they're also they're giving you an allowance, they're they're training you with coaches, and you come last or you're doing worse, then that will be grounds to take you off the national team. Right, because they're gonna say, well, we're no matter how much we're funding you, you're not doing any better. So, back to the national pool, or if you don't want to go to the national pool, maybe you might be out. Okay, that might be the situation. But it's going to be uh, approved. But in order for that to happen, you need to remain in good standings and a good relationship with these governing bodies. So, who is it approved by? Once again, approved by your national sports commission. Okay, your national sports commission is usually your uh, the government sector of your of your country that deals with sports and funding, uh, but some countries like USA don't don't have that. So it might be coming from you know the Olympic Committee or it might be coming from private funding or so forth. Whoever it's coming from, they're gonna want to, you to have a professional attitude. Now, let's move on to the final uh, level, which is going from the national team and becoming a star athlete. Now the question is, how do you get to be considered a star athlete and there's only one one way to prove this and that is by proving it in an international games that you have the potential to win a medal and what that means is if you enter uh, WDSF breaking for gold events because you're the national team and you go and you rank number two or number three or even number one you are going to be considered now a star athlete because now they say, hey, this person has the potential to win a medal 
we need to start supporting this person and rallying the entire country behind this person. And this is how it actually works, right? So once you become a star athlete, like I said, there's so much benefits to that you have so much more freedoms, you know, you don't have, you've already proven that you can win a medal. So there's going to be less expectations from you. You know, there might be some national events that, that you might be training somewhere else. They're not going to expect you to come, right? But for everyone else, if there's a national championships that's held by your governing body, everybody in the pool, everybody in the national team will be expected to go. But for you, you might be able to say, Hey, I need to train. I need to get ready for whatever. Right? So that is what happens when you become a star athlete, and the expectations are only this, that you continue to demonstrate that you can, you, you have the potential to win a medal by always continuing to rank in the top three. Maybe even the top eight can be uh, grounds to be a star athlete, but if you're always ranking the top three, that's going to be huge, okay? And you're going to be expected to continually maintain pride and honor to represent the nation and governing bodies okay you're gonna you know not only do you be professional but now you're gonna be having to exude uh some sort some sort of nationalism in your country and so this is going to be a main uh topic that our main expectation is to show you know love for the country because the country you are representing the country okay and this getting to become a star athlete will be recognized needs to be recognized by the by your national olympic committee so that's basically how the tier system format of getting into the Olympics works, okay? And all the expectations depending on what level you're at, okay? But I need to say that, remind everyone that each of these tiers kind of has its own ranking system, right? So if you're in the, the, the reserves or the national pool, you should still be competing to see who's the number one, number two, number three, you know? And then if the same thing as the national team, in the national team, you're competing with each other, maybe even with the star athletes who might be in there, competing with each other to see who is ranked number one, two, and three on the team so that when they start sending people out, they know who's who should go first or, or where everyone's at on the ranking list, okay? And uh, also, everyone has to know that even though there, this is a way to start from the bottom and go to the top, players don't necessarily start from the bottom, okay? So let me just give you an example. Um, Let's just say, for example, B Girl 671 from China happens to have a US citizenship, a US passport, okay? Because she's already gone so far in, the, in WDSF, uh, breaking for gold and has won the last one. Now, let's just say she, America finds out that she has a passport. They can say, hey, they can say to her, hey, why don't you represent the USA? This is what we do for our athletes in our country, which, to be honest, may not even, will not probably be more than than what China gives, right? But let's just say it's a lot. Um, they might be able to take her in and represent and go directly to the star athletes or to the national elite because she's already ticked the box to proving that, you know, she is a medal potential winner, right? And so she does not have to start from the bottom and go all the way back up because she's already proven that, right? And this has also happened, you know, in the Philippines and in other places in the world as well. Uh, this happens in all sports, not just uh, breaking, but all sports and just the way it kind of goes. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope I was able to shed some light on how uh, the journey to representing your national team works and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys all in the future. See you guys at the Olympics. Peace.